Yields back now, recognize the ranking member for five minutes. And I think we'll do the ranking member and one more, and then we'll have to take a break. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I know that we talked earlier about a post that Mr. Kennedy had at the beginning of the Biden administration. I just want the record to reflect that that post has not been taken down. Um, so I'm wondering right. about the extent of censorship when the post is still there. But more importantly, Again, I go back to just the fact that we are creating a platform for, these, for this kind of discussion, not about the censorship, not about free speech, but the content of some of that speech that we are amplifying in this room. I'm appalled and, and just so troubled by colleagues that I have to work with, that these are individuals who would bring a witness who's promoted a video that compared the COVID vaccine to the Tuskegee trials. The Tuskegee trials were a very difficult time in black America where individuals who were already sick with a disease were then reviewed, experimented on who already had a disease to see how far that disease went. And making the comparison to manip that manipulates and preys on black people's feelings about the atrocities of the past in order to prevent them from seeking life-saving vaccines in the present. And knowing that this is dangerous, I, I cannot also be uh, unaware that this comes from an individual who by Mr. Roy's introduction is very smart and understands the implications of this. You know, Mr. Kennedy's own family dis decries his stance on vaccines, and families disagree on a lot of things. Uh, I got family members that, you know, we all disagree, so that doesn't mean anything. But the fact that he uh, has famously sent a request to a party guest that they had to be vaccinated to come to his party. And I'd like to introduce into the record a letter from Lewis Silkin, a law firm representing Mr. Kennedy, which states, as he has stated repeatedly, he vaccinated all his children, and I'd like that to be introduced into the record, um, but tells the black community and myself, a mother of five black children, that I should really be careful and not necessarily have the same safeguards to protect my family my children from a virus that has killed millions of people because I'm black. There's no secret that this is an amplification of his own platform. You know, I'm not gonna talk about the money that's received from the Children's Health Defense, from his anti-vaccine organization that's responsible for a majority of the false information about there, out there about COVID, and the notoriety that's gained from it by manipulating black and other vulnerable communities to propagate these pseudosciences. Ms. Wiley, are you aware of the phrase superhuman yet subhumanization? I can't say I'm aware of the phrase, I am aware of the viewpoint. And can you share what you believe that to mean when it comes to black people? Well, sadly and unfortunately, we have a history in this country where black people were both by law and by social view viewed as inferior and subhuman, and that there were stereotypes attached to that that includes um, all kinds of myth about the ability to disregard both the health needs, health conditions, and disparities that exist for black people and in black communities to the detriment, not only of the health of people who are black, but also to public health by not taking good sound. Yes, they, you know, at, in chattel slavery, you don't have to feed them the same way because they can take it. They, they, they can handle that. They don't need as much. Or now with COVID, they've got superhuman genes that they don't need to get the same vaccines in, and they may be more susceptible if you get vaccines. Ms. Wiley, why do you think someone might choose to target the black community for false health information about vaccines? 
Well, I can't say that I can um, sit in a position to explain why anyone would do that. I can only say that for those who wished to prevent people from getting a vaccine, it was very clear that one of the ways in which you could convince people not to is to play on fears that have basis in historic experience. Um, sadly, and, and frankly, um, and I can say this personally speaking from having conversations with friends, mm -hmm. with people I worked with. With family who members. Were with, who were terrified mm -hmm. of whether or not um, there might be some adverse consequences for them because of the Tuskegee experiments, explicitly referring to times in which black people had been tested on without their permission or denied access to medical intervention despite awareness that it would be detrimental to their health. That distrust has historical fact. Um, and we have come to a point where in terms of the COVID vaccine and what we were being told by scientists, including the ways in which both the CDC, the World wow. Health Organization and others we're examining, we're actually putting out factual information, both about the degree to which testing and trials before approval had been, in, had included uh, people who were black, people who were Asian, and therefore had more basis, Wiley, in fact, to be able to state scientifically. Time of the gentlelady, time of the gentlelady has expired. Gentlelady yields.